Hello viewers, this is probably something uh, some of you might have been looking forward to, have been wondering about um, for a while, and this is the full kit list in my bag, first of all, and I'm just going to talk you through it all, and uh, I'm going to try and do it relatively quickly because it's pretty hot out here, we're currently in the Wadi Rum uh, in the desert, so I don't want to cook the electronics. So it's not with the clothes, I have obviously my shirt that's really lightweight, it doesn't look great, it's really baggy, but that's good because it's loose fitting, it's comfortable. I wish I had two of these really, um, but they're fast drying, they're easy to wash, they keep the sun off me, they're long sleeve, which is essential. They don't look good, but hiking shirts are so important. Then I just have a pair of lightweight shorts, and then I have one pair of undies, which are like this sort of, uh, I don't know, what, what would you material would you call this, Amy? Like a mm, quick dry do. sports material I'm not sure. um, that I got from a hiking shop. I don't wear underpants when I'm hiking. <laughs> I actually just put, I had, you remember earlier in the videos, I had some chafage problems, if you may recall. So I just use Vaseline every day to keep things lubricated down there. And also like, it just aerates me a bit more. I'm walking around the desert and stuff. So I tend not to wear undies in this sort of environment. But I do have them for like going to town and stuff and keep them warm and whatnot. Uh, and then I have a sports uh, shirt, a lightweight one. Then I have a slightly thicker one. Um, I tend not to wear those unless we're sort of like in town and stuff because I keep them clean for town. I mainly just wear this one that I'm hiking in because it gets dirty but you know once it gets to a certain amount of dirty there's not a lot you can do. And then I have merino wool thermals. Uh, these are really good. One of them is Icebreaker. I think this one's a different brand. They're re really quite expensive but they're kind of worth their weight in gold. They're about I think they're like 80 pounds each per item but they've been so useful like at night i wear them as pajamas essentially and uh, again i wear the beanie uh, in my sleeping bag a lot of the time but also towards the beginning of the trail you remember there were those some colder days and so i was wearing my beanie it's a fire kind of morning this morning oh so i wouldn't go anywhere without those because if the temperature drops i put those on in the sleeping bag and then i can stay warm and i also make really sure to kind of keep them dry which kind of brings me to my next point which is that i keep all of these in a lightweight dry bag yeah that was again critical um keep my clothes dry when it rained that time uh, then we got into the tent my thermals and the rest of my clothes are dry and it was a really cold night so i was able to wear a sports top my thermals my woolly hat it was all dry and then i carry Five pairs of socks, two thin pairs, three woolly pairs. I like to change my socks quite a lot because again, you remember at the beginning of the trail, I had really bad blisters. I was having problems with my feet. So I actually carry five pairs of socks. And then uh, my sleeping bag, again, I keep it in a dry bag. Again, it's just so easy to get in and out of my main bag. You know, just slotting everything in. If you want to get the back at the bottom of the bag, you don't have to get everything out. You can just pull these out, chuck them in. It's a T1, I've shown you before. It's a sea to summit and it's kind of like the entry model. It's still not, they're still not cheap. I can't remember exactly, but I think they're like $300, maybe more AUD. So it's still not cheap, but it's down. So if it gets wet, it's pretty useless. They don't retain their heat well when they're wet. Unlike wool, which is one of the only fabrics that actually maintains warmth when it's wet. It's actually a chemical reaction that takes place within the wool that generates heat, believe it or not. So yeah, uh, the, that's why it's really important that I keep the down sleeping bag in a dry bag and uh, that goes right at the bottom of my bag as well so if my bag is sat in like a puddle or something my sleeping bag is not going to get wet again just kind of like stopping any risks of hypothermia i just make sure that all my warm stuff that keeps me warm in an emergency my thermals and my sleeping bag are always dry puffer jacket every hiker has to have a puffer jacket this one's Kathmandu. uh it's a 550 fill i think it's down and the advantage of down, same with the sleeping bag, is that it's so warm, but also the, they're lightweight. So it's a lightweight jacket. It crunches down to nothing. Sometimes I put both mine and Amy's in here and it still fills the bag. Again, though, you'll notice dry bag, easier to store in my backpack, but again, keeping down dry, critical. Moving round, we've got the tent, which I think you've seen plenty of. The great thing about this is it's about, I think it's 1.5 or one, I think it's one kilogram, isn't it, Amy? Yeah, one kilo. It doesn't have a frame that comes with it. The frame comes from the two hiking poles that dig into the ground. And I was sort of skeptical about this when I bought it because I thought, oh, you know, in these kind of conditions, when the wind picks up in the desert, you know, is, is it going to be like structurally sound? And it's been amazing. Like, I can't even understand how it's so strong. Like, you try and shake it inside, it's so sturdy. It's been in really windy conditions. 
We're getting blown all over the place here. And this was a cheaper one. There was one that's a lot more expensive, which I'll get the name for. There, there for you. Z-Packs. Z-Packs that everyone buys. This was a Lanshan. I think it was like a hundred pounds and it's been amazing. And it was also waterproof as well, which is brilliant. We obviously had that issue with the ventilation inside, but there was a more ventilated one I could have bought. So that one's kind of on us, I think. But after Amy cut the holes in it and put windows in it, it's been absolutely brilliant. We stopped getting that moisture inside of the tent. So I highly recommend that. It's been awesome. Yeah. Then the pot. Originally we had two of these and a gas thing. It's a bit dirty, sorry. But this is an aluminium pot. It was silver on the outside. And this has been fires, really hot fires, and it's been brilliant. I did have a handle with it, but I didn't need it in the end, it's just extra weight. And also, um, like you could grab it with the handle, but it's just pointless because you can just use a sock or just like slowly drag it out the fire. It's just less weight. And it's all about conserving weight of this stuff. Like everything is about weight uh, conservation. So this was just perfect for like five minute noodles. It was perfect for like pasta. Uh, we used it loads and gas on this trip, you do not need gas. Like really, I, I heard that when I was researching for this trip and I was like, okay, well, I'm still gonna bring my pocket rocket, which is a little thing that fits onto the gas. I'll show you a picture of it. And we bought gas at the hiking shop in Amman and I carried it for like a day. It was like, screw this, there's wood everywhere. And even here, the Bedouin are using just like these sticks to make fire, you know, to, to make a cup of tea and, and we could do the same. The only reason we're not doing that is because making fire and making hot food is a bit of a hassle. So we've kind of done it less and less as we go on through this. It's gotten hotter as well. At further north, we were having a lot more fire and hot meals when it was a bit cooler. Also some of the stuff that you have to cook, like pasta is messy and uses a lot of water. But also we had a dual purpose for this, which was we did the overnight oats in it. We just put the oats in it, put the water in it. And then by the morning, the oats have absorbed all that water and we put raisins in it as well. And it just create a nice breakfast. Um, again, we stopped doing that so much. We're more on croissants at the moment now because we just like had it for a month. We were so sick of cold porridge in the morning. But yeah, I'd highly recommend that. Wouldn't go anywhere without this because it just gives you that. It's so light, it's aluminium. And it just gives you that other, another opportunity to like have a hot meal. Even though we're not using it now, I don't hate the fact that I'm carrying this around. So there's that, a knife. I've just got a, it's a bit dirty. <laughs> Everything's dirty because we're at the end of the trip now. But yeah, I've been trying to keep it clean. This is actually a scuba knife. It's stainless steel, which means it, and because it's scuba, it doesn't rust, which is great. It does lose its sharpness a bit. It's pretty brunt right now. But yeah, this has been useful. I've kept it on the front of my bag for opening packets of things. You know, general chopping. The bright yellow just means like if I drop it in the sand or I drop it somewhere, or it's in the bottom, I have to uncamp and I take it off and I'm always cutting stuff with it all the time. I just put it down. I can see it, which is the same purpose of why they make them yellow in, for scuba. If you drop them when you're scuba diving, you can see them at the bottom of the sea because they're brightly colored. So the same thing. That's why I carry a scuba knife. Spork, we used to carry two of these. They're actually titanium. They weigh like nothing. We used to carry two, but now me and Amy just share the same spork. <laughs> we, do, we, have like, like, we do like for the noodles, three scoops each, and then we pass it over to each other and we count our scoops. And Amy's always like, have you had three scoops or more? So maybe you have two sporks, I don't know. <laughs> Rain gear, again, would never go anywhere without this, just because you get wet, then you get cold, then you get hypothermia. So. Yeah, it's more of a safety thing than anything. And then Osprey bag cover. We put these on every night before we go to sleep. It, tr it limits the amount of bugs that are getting into our bags. It was better in the grass when there was a lot of bugs up north in Jordan. Um, and also you'll remember there was a lot of scorpions around at one point. So we just put these around the bag and then tighten them up so that only our straps are hanging out, like our shoulder straps are hanging out the back of them. And we've done that every night. And also if you get a rain in the night, we tend to lie them so that they're like the back. So this is on the floor because the tent's going over the top of them. So it stops water going into the top of this hole if the, if the bag's lying like that. And that just means that if it rains, the water goes underneath the bag. It's not just going to get absorbed into your bag. It's going to keep the water, it's going to keep the um, bag dry. So it kind of acts like a bucket that the bag sits in. Sun protection, you've seen loads. The buff for keeping the sun off your neck, for keeping it off your face. And then I got a hat. I would probably change the hat for a bucket hat. They don't look nearly as good. I know they look a bit lame. You look a bit like a five-year-old if you're a man wearing one. But Amy's has been so good to her. It keeps the sun off her face. Whereas I always have to keep the, wear the buff to keep the sun off my face. And the problem is, this keeps getting sweaty every day and it stinks. There's not a lot of opportunity to wash it. And also, it's just hot in there. It's just hot in there. Even though it's merino wool, it does just get a bit hot. So that's that. Water, we're currently on uh, trying to get through 
two days without getting a water supply. So I've currently got, this is three liters, the one of these on each side of my bag. This is three liters, this goes in the bag. I've had some issues with the Camelback. The catch on top snapped off, so it doesn't hook into my bag anymore. Really annoying. So I'm gonna swap that for a platypus. Yeah, that's three liters, that's three liters, mix six liters, and this is about two, two and a half. So that's about eight and a half liters there. And that's good for two days um, easily, as, as long as you don't get like heat exhaustion. The tarp has been really useful for Jordan Trail. I'd highly recommend it. You've seen me have used it for cover loads. Um, it's just useful to have somewhere you can just put, like now, there's not, when the sun gets right above us, these areas of shade can just disappear. So really useful. Garmin, I spoke to loads about the Garmin. I did a whole thing about the Garmin. The summary of the Garmin is that, is it, could you get away with doing the trail without the Garmin? Probably. Would it be a lot more dangerous? Yes. Has the Garmin made this a lot easier to navigate? Oh my God, yes. It's so good to navigate with, it's so easy. I think it's worth its weight in gold. And just having that ability to call for SRS, it's just, and also be able to communicate with the SRS people via text message, it's just, it just takes the stress out of the whole trip. Then we've got phone, and then I've got an anchor solar channel. I'm using it today because we've just done seven days without going to the hotel, and I'm just starting to really run out of charge now to keep the GoPro going, but also to keep all the electronics going. This thing weighs a kilo, it's heavy. Honestly, generates electricity pretty slowly, like really slowly, in fact. The compass, just in case the Garmin was to go awry, I've, we've not used it, it's just an emergency item. Two Kindles. This is interesting. We thought we'd be doing loads of reading, but because we're doing 20K, sometimes more a day, today we're going to be, yesterday we did 37 and a half. <laughs> There's not a lot of reading going on at the end of the day. I think we're too, we're too tired. And sometimes you can just be too tired to sit there and read and you just want to like either go straight to bed, which we've been doing, or just watch something on your phone, just watch some TV on your phone. It's been extra weight and together they're probably half a kilo. So yeah, I wouldn't bring those again. Head torch, the black diamond head torches are amazing and they're not even that expensive. I think this was like 40 quid. It just never runs out of battery and it's so bright. Oh, it's cracked. But anyway, it's, uh, I highly recommend getting one of these. In fact, we're gonna get Amy one because she's on batteries. If she runs out of batteries, she's got no head torch. So this can be charged off the power bank. You don't wanna be carrying around loads of heavy batteries that you may or may not use. Whereas the power bank, you've got it anyway. Just so just do that. And then the power bank here, then I've got, yeah, so just get a big one of those. That's 20,000. And then I've got wax string. It's like really strong string. Um, and I've got a needle in here. That's obviously if any rips and like bags and stuff. And then, yeah, this is just spare tent material. Yeah, and then I've got spare string. I used to have more, but we've been using it. So definitely bring spare string. It's, it really comes in handy all the time. Uh, and the other thing that I have loads of are these S clips. And I would recommend getting like half a dozen of these between two people because I'm mean, currently using them to to connect this to my bag. We always using them to clip hats onto bags, to clip things to trees, you know, all that kind of stuff. So they're really useful. This is really gross in here now, but this is fungal cream <laughs> and savlon, which is antiseptic cream. Yeah, this has been really useful. I'd definitely do this again. Maybe come up with a better way of storing it. Fungal cream, just in case you start to get like red itchy feet from, uh, that's when you know that's fungal and that's when you're, you know, you're just festering in your boots all day. The antiseptic cream, uh, just for cuts and grazes, we've used that quite a lot as well. So I need to do my bag. I love this thing. I think it's absolutely awesome. This is the Osprey. Exos 48. It's a lightweight version of basically the Atmos. It's lightweight, it's so good. It's the perfect size 48. Because when it needs to get bigger, it can. Like, when, and on the few days I've had to carry like five days food, I ha can make it bigger. But most of the time it's quite small and it's so light. And I forgot, medical kit's not been done. So medical kit, which is, as you're not surprised, S clips to the bag so it doesn't fall off. So it's easy to get to grab if I just need it in an emergency. I don't want to get this all out, but suffice to say, it's got bandages, codeine, paracetamol. It has wound wash, which are like these, these liquid things in here. So if you've got a serious wound, we could just squirt it in, wash it out. And I've actually got two different types of antibiotics in here. Uh, which is worth mentioning. I spoke to my doctor about it before I left. I said, look, you know, we're going to be out there for six weeks. You know, what can you give me? So he gave me um, an antibiotic for like wounds, festering wounds. And he gave me an antibiotic, uh, just a general penicillin 
for things like sore throats if we start to get a really bad throat infection. We don't want that to kind of like stop the whole trip. We've not used them, hopefully we won't have to, but it's just good to have that. You know, the last thing you want to do is be running to, you know, around Rum Village where it's just like, you know, there's not a lot going on in that village and I'll start looking for pharmacies and doctors and stuff. So yeah, the idea is just to forget about it, not to have it in the way every day that you're moving it constantly out the way, but just to have it down the side so it's easy to grab in an emergency. So that's why it's perfect here because it just, it just pops straight in the bottom of my bag there. It just clips on here. And it's got all the little things as well, like a modium in case you get the shit, like all that kind of stuff. And that's it basically, I think. There's a couple bits and bobs like wires. I haven't got, I've got, I have an electrics bag. I should probably mention that as well. But I keep all my electronics in. I keep my SD cards by themselves in a plastic bag, in a Ziploc bag, in this sandwich bag <laughs> to make sure that the content I've delivered for the viewers is not lost forever. And I've got all my wires in there, spare GoPro battery. And then I put that inside here, underneath here, where I also keep cash. So my electronics aren't just like slowly cooking in top of my bag. I think some people just like chuck electronics and stuff like this and then they don't realize that the top of your bag gets pretty hot. So I try and put all my rain stuff in here just to keep the stuff underneath insulated. So yeah, sorry I've done that like a motor mouth at a million miles an hour, but I'm worried that I'm just cooking the electronics as we speak. And then lastly, black diamond hiking poles. These things are worth their weight in gold as well. They're just so useful. I had to tighten them once at the beginning, but I have battered these around. Um, and they've been great. And they're aluminium. Don't get the lightweight ones. I really don't think so. We used to have the carbon fiber ones and they just break, they shatter when you put weight on them. They split, they crack as well when you like try and do them up too tight. Whereas these are aluminium and they're a bit more solid. And I think I think because they're a bit cheaper as well, they make them a bit more solid. Um, I don't know, but I would actually recommend going for a mid-range hiking pole. But it's got a cork handle as well, which is great for sweating. You know, your hand doesn't get all slimy and slippery and horrible. It, you know, it stays dry in there. And also, yeah, they're sturdy, sturdy as hell. And it was important for us to have sturdy ones because obviously they form part of the structure of our tent. And the other thing is we use these all the time, like every day. And it makes such a big difference because you're taking off a few kilograms of your pack by using them in your hands. I keep the GoPro attachment on here. You may have seen some of those shots. It's gone a bit manky after six weeks of string and tape, but it did work. It did work. So yeah, that's mine. And now we'll do Amy's. Extra things I forgot to mention, uh, little things. Nail clippers. You want to keep your nails really short on your feet because if they're long, uh, you can lose a toenail because it can hit the front of your uh, boot. So I keep nail clippers because they're light and small. Also, you remember I had a lot of problems with my shoes because they weren't the right shape for my foot. Uh, these have been fine, no blisters, but they're heavy. Uh, and so I'm using more energy, as I've mentioned, uh, by wearing them. Uh, and, but the other thing you meant, but they've been great. They've been great, especially in this terrain. But next time I'd like to get some trail runners that actually fit me properly. <laughs> more my fault than anything. And then uh, gaiters. These are getting a bit loose now, but gaiters have been so useful, particularly in the southern sections of the Jordan Trail. You know, just because of the sand, it stops the sand getting into your shoes. So just two couple of things to mention there. And yeah, Amy's gonna show you what's in hers. Bear in mind that some of the stuff that's in Amy's, cause there's two of us, we carry each other's stuff. So I'm carrying all the food cause it's heavy. Um, I'm carrying more water. I carry all the electronics. I try and carry the heavy stuff. Amy carries the lighter stuff, um, but she does carry some really important stuff. That's why the water filter and some of those items aren't in my bag because items like that, that can be shared between two people might be either in my bag or her bag, if that makes sense. Okay, so now I'll show you what's in my bag. I'll first start off with what I'm wearing. I like to wear my buff around my neck because when I wear my hat, which is actually down there, it doesn't cover this part of my neck, so it's just more sun protection. I always wear a long sleeve shirt. I just have these one pair of shorts. I have a bralette, not quite a sports bra because this is a lot comfier. Undies. I actually wear two pairs of socks just to prevent blisters can't see but like a thinner layer and a thicker layer then my gaiters and then obviously my trail shoes which I think are the outrise um, to be honest these aren't great especially in the sand because I already have holes from doing 600 kilometers and the sand gets trapped in between the layers of fabric so it kind of compresses my toes <laughs> <laughs> got this hiking shirt 
I've got another hiking shirt. I've got a few thermals. So like Grant, I've got a thermal uh, long sleeve top, a thermal short sleeve top and thermal trousers. I've also got a beanie, some hiking trousers. I have two spare socks and one spare pair of undies. There's a donkey, yeah. <laughs> also have a puffer jacket like Grant. Over here, I carry most of the toiletries, as you can see. Here, like toothbrush, hand sanitizer, Vaseline, as Grant said, he needs that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sun cream. We carry some bandages, like we um, tape up our hips and things like that. This one is not good because it doesn't stick, as you can see, but we have this sports tape, which is the blue one, mm. which will stick as long as you keep it on there. <laughs> yeah. Also good when I had a bad ankle, I wrapped it up as well. I have this little bag just full of personal products, like menstrual cup, hairbrush. So someone broke it, I'm not too sure who. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I we, know who. we bring this everywhere we go and it has all the different outlets you need. It's been yeah. great. Mm. And also it has all the USB ports so you can charge full things. I have a few packs of these wipes just to like wipe our feet and hands. Same with wilderness wash, we can use that to wash our bodies, to wash the pot, but again, it's not an essential item. Poop shovel <laughs> and then some toilet paper, which we are very, very low, so hopefully we get this finished tomorrow. <laughs> Same with Grant, I've got a medical kit, but this one's not as, I guess, intensive. Um, we also have our Jordan passes, which again, you don't need. <laughs> this medical kit just has paracetamol, yes. ibuprofen, band-aids, some tampons. So I just quickly like explain that for you. Yeah. yeah, so we have two medical kits. The one that you saw in my bag is like the emergency, you're bleeding everywhere, you're gonna die one. I keep my rain cover for my bag and my rain coat in my top pocket. It's North Face, it actually breathes. It's been great. I also have a snack bag. Again, not gonna go into too much detail because we have done a video on that already. It's the um, best bag. Yeah, it's the fun bag. <laughs> I carry my phone, two AirPods. I also have a knife. So this one's not as, um, I guess strong, strong yeah. big as Grant's. It's a lot sharper. It, but it is lightweight. It's like it 135 is, it's grams lightweight. or something. It's very sharp. We have actually used it to pick out like thorns and stuff out of our skin. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lighter, my head torch. When we go back home, we will buy the chargeable one. I carry the water filter, my sunglasses, and in this is our passports, debit cards, some money, things like that. And then over here, I have the same sleeping bag as Grant does. This one is in... Dry bag. Dry bag. The Cedar Summit ultralight mat. These are great. <laughs> They're super easy to blow up, pack down, super light. They're insulated as well. Yeah. So it keeps you warm or cool. They could not be any better, could they? No. One pillow, <laughs> a blow up pillow. So one of the pillows actually popped and luckily I keep my bat, my clothes. Who in. uses that pillow? You use that pillow. Your princess. <laughs> You're my princess. <laughs> uh, Grant keeps his clothes in a dry bag, so it's this shape, but luckily I keep mine in a packing cube, so it's more pillow shape. <laughs> I my, feel bad about it. I should be gentleman and let you have it, but I love the pillow. It was like a weekend in the pillow pop. That was just unlucky because mine's not fine. And that I, pops I don't actually week. know what happened. I couldn't find a hole or anything. I think it went on a thistle. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. I'm not too sure. Same as Grant, Camelback. Mine's been fine. It has cracked here, but luckily I still have one side left. You're still going to switch it, aren't you? Yeah, still going to switch it because this won't last <laughs> another trip. Then I have some more water here. So you're carrying six litres, aren't you? Yeah. Butt mats, two of these. These just go on the outside How of my bag. How good are the butt mats? <laughs> oh, we love these. Mm. We use them every single day. <laughs> They're great. Especially in this terrain because it's all rocky. The last thing you yeah. want for a lunch break is to sit down on rocks yeah. and be uncomfortable. Just some fire lighters. We don't need these now, obviously, <laughs> because we're not having fires. Uh, but I guess it's a good thing just to carry anyway, just yeah. because we get really cold one night. Something like that. My bag. I haven't taken the rocks out of here, <laughs> but I do have a pocket of rocks. If you've seen our previous videos, you know why. <laughs> My bag is the Aura 50. It's fine, it's comfy, mm. it's 
it's really nice on your bag. It's nice to carry, but it's heavy. Yeah. So for our next trip, I will get another bag, even if it's the same as Grant, just in a, the smaller size. So it fits me a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but you mean the men's, you mean, potentially? Pardon? Because the women's fits you a bit strangely, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't like the women's version, so I think I'll get the men's in the small size, yeah. if that makes sense. But it's about maybe two point something kilos. Yeah, it's about a kilo heavier. Yeah, I think a bit more. It's just a bit too much. Yeah. But again, this one is great because the hip belt literally hugs you. So it puts all of your weight onto your hips. Hence why I need to tape them up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, it is it is really comfy. I do love it. I just wish it was a kilo lighter. That's everything in my bag. And also I have the same hiking poles as Grant, just the women's version. Um, I have the same opinion with Grant. They're fantastic. I've literally put all of my weight onto them and no problems. I also carry my PLB. I keep this in the top pocket where I keep my raincoat and cover for my bag just because it's easily accessible. Grant's gone into more detail in this in other videos but this is just a backup if something really bad happens then I can contact emergency services. Yeah what's PRB stand for Amy? Personal locator beacon. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very simple compared to the Garmin it's literally just You don't one. need to do that. Oh yeah, you don't even need to do that. Not used it before. Yeah hopefully we won't have to. <laughs> There's yeah. all warning signs and things. You press that so button. So that's a test. I think that's on. I don't want to <laughs> press it. anything, but that's just another backup if something happens to the Garmin and we're stuck or maybe I can't get to Grant's bag for some reason, then I've got this one on me. And I've also in this little pouch, I've got some like tape for our mattresses if they do pop. Cool. Now what's the word? What's the fresh phrase? Onwards. Onwards. <laughs> I need to sit We're in the heading stage. over there. We're gonna have some lunch, and then keep our keep on keeping on to uh, Petra. Now we oh, sorry Petra, Petra? Akaba. We got back to Petra. We got about fifty k's left. Yeah, take. something like that. I just realised that it, it echoes here. I don't know if you better pick this up on uh, the GoPro audio, but it's like um, if you watch the Grinch where he goes, "You're an idiot." <laughs> Echo. Oh, it does it three times down here. Oh, having too much fun here in the desert by myself. Ego! Oh, how cool is that? Like and subscribe. <laughs>